closing session to try to catch up to us. Hi, so I'm really going to um, focus on summarizing the PROFFER trial stands for the uh, proximal fracture of the humerus eva evaluation by randomization. Um, this study is causing, well, stirring up a lot of controversy among uh, shoulder surgeons, and I have nothing to disclose for this talk. Um, so just quick review, these fractures, they occur in about 5 to 6 percent of all adult fractures. Most of these occur in people over 65 years old. They are associated with osteoporosis, and there is at each specific incidence increasing in those patients that are older than 60 years old. There's a 2.5-fold increase in women and a 3.4-fold increase in men. 51% of these fractures are displaced, and the majority of these fractures do involve the surgical neck, 77% of them involving the neck. So our treatment options for these, you know, for the non-displaced or minimally displaced uh, surgical neck, it's pretty easy. We treat these non-operatively. For those that are displaced uh, by nearest criteria, more than one centimeter or greater than 45 degrees of angulation, it is controversial how we treat these. We can treat them non-operatively, or we can do an open reduction internal fixation, typically with the locking plates or a arthroplasty. Um, so the uh, Bell study published in 2011, JBJS, um, it showed that the incidence of these fractures, it's been relatively stable over the years. Um, however, when they looked at uh, the range of 1999 to 2000 compared to 2004 to 2005, it did show that our um, rate of fixing these operatively have increased by about 3.2%. The relative increase is 25.6% for all the surgical treatment, and the relative increase is 28.5% when we fix it by open reduction internal fixation, and the relative increase fixing these with arthroplasty is 19.6%. Uh, the latest Cochrane review uh, from 2015, it reviewed 31 studies, 1,941 patients, and it concluded from the review that there is high to moderate evidence that there is no difference in patient outcomes for these displaced proximal humeral neck fractures when they're treated non-operatively versus operatively at one and two years post-injury time. So to get to the PROFER study, so this was a multi-center, prospective, randomized clinical trial that took place in the United Kingdom and involved 32 hospitals there. It took place from 2008 to 2011, and its purpose was to look at the clinical effectiveness of surgical versus non-operative treatment in adults with displaced proximal humeral surgical neck fractures. Um, there were originally 250 patients, and 125 were randomized to each group. However, due to um, the patients changing their mind or the surgeon changing their mind, in the end, there were 231 patients available for the statistical analysis. All these patients were greater than 16 years old, and there are 114 in the surgical group, 117 in the non-operative group. Uh, the criteria was that the patient had to have a displaced surgical neck proximal humerus fracture that presented within three weeks from the injury. Their definition um, of displacement was a quote from the study, sufficient for treating surgeon to consider surgical intervention. So it was more broad than the NEARS uh, criteria for displacement. Uh, the mean age of these patients was 66 years old, the range being 24 to 92, and they had two years of follow-up. Patients excluded were those fractures that did also involve a sh shoulder dislocation, the open fractures, patients did not have sufficient mental, mental capacity to consent for the uh, um, study, if they had medical comorbidities that precluded them from getting surgery or anesthesia, if it was a pathological fracture other than an osteoporotic fracture, if the patient had a terminal illness, or if they had a severe soft tissue injury or multiple upper limb fractures. So the interventions were for the surgery group, they either had an ORIF with a locking plate or they had a humeral head replacement of a hemiarthroplasty. Non-operative treatment group, they had sling immobilization for three weeks followed by physical therapy. In both of these groups, they did get the standard outpatient physical therapy. The main outcome that they looked at, primary outcome was the Oxford shoulder score. Um, and the higher the score, the better the outcome. The secondary outcomes were the short form 12 survey, if they had any complications, if they needed any subsequent therapy, or if they had mortality. 
data points were taken at 6, 12, and 24 months. Uh, so this figure is taken from the manuscript, and it showed that overall there is no significant difference in the primary outcome of the Oxford Shoulder Score at all of their time points, also at their overall time of two years uh, post-injury. The surgical group had a score of 39.07, and the non-operative group had a score of 38.32. Also looking at the secondary outcomes, the two groups, there were no significant differences at all time points and overall at two years. This is also taken from their manuscript. Um, and just to go over some of the points, um, the number of patients with complications overall in the surgical group was 30, and then there are 23 people in the non-op group that had complications. There are 11 patients in each group that, re that required secondary survey, uh, I'm sorry, secondary surgery to the shoulder. And then there are seven people in the surgical group and four people in the non-operative group that required increased or new shoulder-related therapy. All of the uh, medical complications, there are 10 of them in the entire study, and they only occurred in the surgical group during the post-op hospital stay. Those complications, uh, two of them were cardio, two were respiratory, two GI, four was listed as other. The mortality rate, um, also there was no significant difference between the groups, but there are nine patients that died in the surgical group at a rate of 7.2%, and there are five people that died in the non-operative group at a rate of 4%. So in conclusion, um, this study really shows that patients do the same for the displaced surgical neck fractures, whether they get surgery or whether you treat them non-operatively. So it does raise the question to us. I think we have to take a step back. Um, you know, we're, sh we're surgeons, and like mentioned before by Dr. Fuller, we do have the incentive to want to operate more. Um, however, our recent trend of operating on these fractures more and more isn't necessarily supported by all the recent literature that we have.